unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Wait. Well, go on, Madam. Hey, man. Hey, man. We back on set. We got a, a very, very special, special guest here today. Uh, this guy don't really need no introduction. He been getting down for a long time, man. I'm talking about real good at it, too, man. My guy Link is in the building, man. What up, what up, what up? Say, man. And they be calling me, calling. I can't get it like y'all. Right right I'll be trying. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with trying, bro. <laughs> I, I used to, you had me. In, you had me in the mirror a lot of time. Call myself doing my thing. <laughs> ah, that's what's up. <laughs> Say, yeah, boy, yeah. I get ready to go out. And, and and back then, you could slow dance. See, these niggas right got lost now in the sauce. They don't slow dance no more. Right these young niggas crazy. Right I on. know. I miss the days of R&B. I promise you. We have so many artists that come on, and they say they do um, slow songs. But mm. slow songs nowadays is different compared to what it used to be. And I'll be like, okay, well, sing for me. And they sing, but their singing is totally different. I'm looking right. for that R&B soul singing. Right on, right on. And it's just totally different. But that's the generation that we're in right now. I know, which is why I'm still out here grinding so I can try to continue to rep real R&B, man. We ain't going nowhere. So. Man. Yeah. Link, man, it's what going up? down, man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Man, appreciate your invite me, brother. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Man, so, I, man, we like to go back down that rabbit hole, man, just trying to understand, like, who is Link before Link? You know, who is, who? how growing did you come up? up? Where was child. you at as a child growing up, man? Right. So could you give us a little spill on that? Yeah, man, I'm from I'm from right here in uh, Dallas, Texas. Man. Okay. I grew up. Oak Cliff, Texas, man. Oak man, Cliff, that's my that's hood. We have a lot of people come out of Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff, man, yeah, man, man in the building, Oak no Cliff. Doubt. While we on that, man, congratulations. Got to send a shout out to my alma mater, South Oak Cliff High School. Jason Todd, he, he was just on here. Reigning state champions. Exactly. You know what I mean? Representing, so I got to represent my did alma mater. Did you go to man. any of the games? Of course I did. Okay, got Jason to make Todd. Sure. Jason yeah, Todd come, come on, on here and gave us a hell of an interview, man. <laughs> yeah, man. He gave us, did you see it? I, I did not, but you I will. You got to check it. Out, out, man. I noticed that he was on. I was like, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like Coach. Yes, sir. We working, yeah, man. That's I awesome, love man. his stories talking about all them young boys growing up and yeah, how he made dope. an impact on their lives. Dope, I love dope. it. Yeah, so I'm from right here in Oak Cliff, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Grew up, went to church right there in Oak Cliff, which is where, you know. That's where your singing kinda, started? Yeah, that's where it started, man. You know, because we had to go to church. Mm -hmm. You know. Who, who made you go to church, mom or dad? Oh, moms. Moms. moms yeah, moms. She was there with us every Sunday, so we wasn't no missing because she was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had to go. Now, when you go. said us or we, I'm talking how many about my, my siblings, my brothers, my sisters. How many? It was four of us. Four of Okay, yeah, and where I did got you one fall? One brother, two. I'm the second. Okay. From the top, the From oldest the top. boy. Okay. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah, so, so, man. so, was dad in, in the picture? He was not in the picture at that time. Dad did not show up till later on. Till later on. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that? Growing up as a kid? Uh, did it affect in you? In the beginning, anyhow? it did not because I didn't really understand until I started noticing, you know, my partner's pops was around. You know, so I was, you know, I started saying, well, what, you know, what, what? You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I started asking questions. And, you know, mom, she ain't, she just going to tell you only so much that you can handle, you know, at your age. Right. But as I got older, 15, 16, then I, be, I got a little angry. Mm. Like, you know, I was like, because I'm, you know, I'm almost grown up now at this point. So I was a little like, okay, bet, you know. Give me an instance of how you acted out because of um, him being absent. I didn't act out. You didn't act out. Cause no. you say you got a little bit. You were a little yeah, bit angry. Yeah, internally it was for me. Oh, it was for me. I didn't share. I didn't go around. It didn't saying, come out. Nah, nah. It was just for me. Okay. And then one day my mom said, "You want you want to meet your father?" And you were how old? I was fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I do." She said, "Bet we're gonna go see him tomorrow." When and saw him the next day, we we chatted. He explained what he felt like he needed to explain at the time, and I said, "Bet," and I let it go. And we had a relationship. Oh, so you built a relationship after that? Yes, we did. How far did he live from where you were? Um, I'm not sure about that. You know, that's that's 
back then, I can't Y'all really, remember. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You but ain't from, that old. Well, I am old enough for that to be way <laughs> back in the day. You know what I mean? So that's how me and my pop started start okay. getting it in. Yep. That's cool. At mm-hmm. least you didn't have that animosity build up where you like, you can't come back in my life at this time. You know what I mean? Right. Some some kids are like that. Well, it just kind of depends on when they reappear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was still vulnerable at the time. I was 15, so I don't know everything. So at that point, I was I was still able to be molded. Did you your know brothers I mean? and sister have the same dad? No. Okay, so they you were the only child for him. I was. Okay. And okay. when you and and growing up, 15, did you really know that you had the vocals back then? You know what, man? I used to. I didn't know. Like what it really meant, you know what I'm saying? I knew I had something mm-hmm. because uh, me and my mom, we used to um, sit up in the kitchen with her, mm-hmm. and she would pull out her old records, and then you know I would I would hear her playing some sometime, and then I started going in there with her on the days that she would do that, mm-hmm. and you know eventually I started trying to you know join in with her because there was this song she used to play. Um, Which one was it? It was called Close Your Eyes. I believe it was may have been Peaches and Herb. Mm. This was way back. This is the same. I don't, so know, I I don't know that song. I, I, nobody would know it. It was my mom playing it. You know what I mean? So it was from her era. I was just, you know, I heard it. Mm-hmm. So I used to hear it over and over and over. And then I used to, on low key, start so trying sing to sing the, the dude's part. And then when I built up enough nerve, I went in there and, you know, Got out with my mom, you know what I'm saying, and then we—that's what we start doing on Sundays. Was she shocked like the first time you went in and got got down with her? Was she shocked at your vocals, or I she knew? I don't know if she was shocked. She was smiling though. She seemed to be, you know <laughs> wow. what I'm saying, like like cool with it. So because I I can just imagine because I remember my son driving down the street and a song coming on. I can hear him in the back. He was probably about five at the time, and I mm-hmm. hear him back there singing, and I'm like. Man, that boy got a voice. But as he got older, it's like, you know, kids that won't sing in front of you. And I'll be begging him. He's on a choir at school, right. but he's like, no, Mom, don't come. Don't come. You stay over there. Don't come see me. I don't want to hear it. Right. So it was just so funny. I'm not, I'm, and I want to hear him. Right. He made it to regionals recently. And I'm like, and you still won't sing for me? Because you mama. Mm. That's, that's the ultimate one right there. It, the other ones really don't really matter. Yeah, so this, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I say when I built up enough nerve. Mm-hmm. So that's what that is. And then uh, you start. Did you join the choir after that? I did. I did. I, I have. I, I was in the choir in uh, elementary, all the way up, all the way through high school. Mm. Did you get any um, lead? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. With a voice like like what you have, I can imagine. Well, thank you. But you know, back then I ain't really know that. Singing was something that was kind of, you know what I mean? I, I really thought everybody could sing. Mm. You know what I mean? I ain't know I was doing nothing special. I thought everybody could sing. I just mm. thought that was something we all could do. You know what I mean? It wasn't until I got like to high school when I was like, wait a minute. That, that person don't sound like me. I mm. don't sound like that. You know what I mean? And then I started seeing kind of the differences in the people who really could sing versus the other people who could not could not which yeah. was a, what was a a, a a a group that stood out to you when you when you got in high school because you know me i was uh probably uh i can't wait to get to school each day i was on that oh, you know okay, okay. i thought i was doing my thing you know right playboy on. elroy was in the building <laughs> so so right what on. was the group that kind of our baby face yeah baby face that was mm-hmm. another one that mm-hmm. kind of stood out to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. because uh it, it was it whip appeal and all that Probably, well, but it was before that. It was a uh, sweet November, all that you know. Right on, yeah, right yeah, on. yeah, stuff right like that. Right so, what, what group? What group stuck out, stuck out to you? Probably back then it would it would be like new edition because they new was edition. you know they was coming. That was like they first little you know what I'm saying they was just coming out with the Candy Girl joint. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Jacksons, of course, from from way back. You know, not necessarily that they had nothing out then, but it's just because I had seen the Jacksons. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's kind of hard for me to remember back then. I think maybe, um, what's the dudes used to sing? Uh, 
No, that was Gerald, matter of fact. Levert. Mm. Okay. It's written all over your face. That's it. Mm. That, yeah. 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 But yeah. when you said new edition, you said candy girl. Mm -hmm. I think about Bobby Brown when he said, I need a girlfriend. I mm -hmm. need a girlfriend. And in and, and that song, I, I, for some reason, I remember I was standing in Las Vegas at the time and I probably was like maybe 13, 12 mm. or something. Wow. And that stood out to me. Uh, during that time, because that was back then, during right. that album, right. uh, that song, for some reason, I was like, man, I mean, even though I heard Ralph, you know what I mean? I heard mm -hmm. Ralph. Ralph mm -hmm. was the one that everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. but Ralph was just Mr. Sensitive. He yeah, was the sensitive man, but that dang Bobby Brown, it was somebody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I knew he was yeah. wild hair before he even he became a wild hair, right? Right on, man. Bobby so, always had that 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 energy, man, that whole, that different energy, man. He was He had to be up front. He was, you know, some people just ain't ain't made to follow, man. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. To no fault of their own. They just got that extra little bug in them, man, where they got to be up top. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how did you guys form a protege? How did y'all even come together to even do that? Actually, what happened was, man, um, a mutual friend used to always talk to me about this one cat. Okay. This dude, he, this Daryl Delight. Delight, I, I, yeah, I, right. I, I seen Delight. You. He used to always tell me, he said, man, I know this one dude, man, he's so cold with the music, blah, 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 right? Unbeknownst to me, the mutual friend used to always tell Delight, say, man, I know this one dude, man, he's nice, man, he with the vocals, he blah, blah, you know what I'm saying? So he was introducing the other cat to each one of us without us knowing already, he was just bigging us up. And one day, we finally met, man, we finally hooked up, right? And within probably, five, 10 minutes, we had written a song, recorded it, all that. It was, like real mm. talk, like I ain't, he, I came in, what up, what up man, what's up? He was playing some music, I heard it, he was boom, boom. I was like, hey, you know, I said, I got something, I got something to go to that. He was like, bet, then I start in, boom. The next thing we know, we recorded the joint, just off just the like rip, you know what I'm saying? And after that, man, of course we, you know, we formed a, a relationship you know what I'm saying, from a musical standpoint, that we was like, yo, we need to do something, right? And him, Delight, he, I guess he had already made his mind up he was going to do this group or whatever. And how old were you this time? Oh, my goodness. This was out of high school? Yeah, this is out of high school. Yeah. I might have been like 22, 23, okay. 24, something like that. Because you, you already had created a group also in high school, right? Mm. No. no. Okay. No, because I was reading somewhere online and it said that you had created a group in high school. Well, I was a part of a, a gospel group. We, I did have a little, you know what I mean? But we was just in high school doing what we, you know oh, okay. what I mean? We wasn't really trying to, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We wasn't. So, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> but um, Delight was like, yo, man, I, I want you to be in this group, man, this group. And I was like, yo, dog, I don't really. Do the group thing. Yeah, I don't really. You know, I had already done it and kind of got... You know what I'm saying? Messed up a little bit. You know what I mean? Because I was way more into it, obviously, than this other person was. So I kind of told myself from then, I'm, I'm not no doing groups no more. But he stayed on me, man. He talked me into it, man. And I was like, I bet, man. So we did our little thing, man. We we was we was just okay in the beginning. We needed work, but we kept working. And then we went to New York and we did our thing. You know what I'm saying? And we were signed. We got signed. Y'all got to signed a, early on. Yeah, yeah, we were signed to uh, ADF and okay. the uh, Untouchables and was supposed to come out on Motown and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, something happened. We got shelved. Uh, didn't happen. And then I was like, yo, who I, was the, I got to go. Who was the other? Uh, it was had other to be some members. other groups. No, no, no. The, yeah, give me the members of Protege. Oh, it was myself. It was Delight. It was Scooby, which is Bobby Perkins. And it was um, Josie. They all from Al Dallas. Talandry. All from Dallas. Wow, dope. Mm -hmm. yep. And and so back then when you guys did when you did that, who would have been like label mates to the cuz cuz they didn't they, they didn't just pick y'all up. It was other people that they were dealing with too. Oh, it was time. a lot of people. Eddie had a lot of people. He had Intro. At Eddie the time. had who Intro? Intro had just kind of boom. They were still on their first single. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But he Eddie had so many groups, man. Yeah. He had so many acts. I can't even remember. It was incredible because after we signed, he had like a... Um, like a get-together? Yes. Like a little something, somebody decides, y'all come out to the house, man. Bet. 
And we went, he had all of his groups that he had signed out there. How, and that was in New York? That was in New how York. How was New York back then? That's a good question. Like how, cause today's New York is not that mm -hmm, New York. Mm -hmm. It isn't. See, I haven't been in years. You so haven't been in years. Cause we it's just long, was out there and, and it's, to me, it still looks similar, but the times have changed so much from, right. you know, the hustle changed a little bit, right. the the group, the music changed a little bit, you know, okay. the, the, the stuff shifted. Now the South and the West Coast and everybody else with this internet is able to, we can do right. it all, anywhere. Right, right. But, uh, it was live, man, when we was there, man. It was, man, we actually moved there and, and lived there for a couple of years. Really? Yeah, we was we was on the grind, man. We was- Well, y'all you know was at up there at Flatbush? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. we, was oh. in, we was in- Manhattan. Manhattan. Eighty sixth and Amsterdam. Oh yeah. You gotta know the street. Right there on the corner. And at the time it was a it was a it was a little club right across the street called Mo Better. Okay. Man, off the chain, man. So when I was in New York back then, you know, R and B was still the top. It was the top. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? It was extremely exciting and fun and you know what I mean, and hard at the same time and Man, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world, man. So you telling me, hold on, he telling me that you and Protege stayed out there for two years and was shelved. Pretty much, you didn't bring nothing out. Well, we weren't shelved the whole two years. The, in the beginning, we was on the hunt. We didn't, we didn't have a record deal and then move to New York. We went to New York to get, get a, and got that record deal and got it. Got so you. you see what I'm saying? So we wasn't shelved the whole two. It probably took us one, a year and a half, or whatever to get it. You feel me? And, then, like, and then it was like, boom, once we got it and saw what was going on, saw the writing on the wall, I was like, nah, man, no. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it took us a little minute to get out of that because Eddie didn't really want to let us out in the beginning. But, you know, it's like, come on, man. I ain't trying to be, you know, sitting up waiting two, three years to, nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no. So when you did that, though, how did that, how did that affect the group during that time? Did it, it bring y'all closer together? Or did it make y'all get at odds? Uh, we weren't at odds, but you know the realization kicked in that I was out. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because it was it was it was like I said, it was difficult for me to do that. You know what I'm saying? And now I done put three, four years, five years, or whatever into it, and here we are again like this for me because I was a little older than the rest of the guys. You know what I'm saying? I was out of college. You know what I mean? I had went to I was hooping. I was on scholarship. I thought I'm going to the league. You know what I mean? And I just shifted my focus when I came home from college. So I was a little old. I said, I don't have six, seven, eight, nine, ten years to sit. I can't do it. I'm going to put this into it. I'm going to put my all into it. If if it don't happen for whatever reason, hey, man, I love you, cats, but I got to go get it. And then that's eventually what happened. You know what I'm saying? The dudes, they of course it was difficult, but they was cool with it. They had to respect it. You know what I mean? I came back home. Delight went, stayed in New York and got on his grind and started coming up, making good connections with labels and stuff like that. And when he got on, we, we had always communicated, said, Link, listen, when, dog, when it's time, I'm bringing you back. And that's what happened. Then I went back to New York. So knowing all, knowing all the things that you know now, if you had to go back to um, right before you went to New York, what would you have changed to make the outcome probably a little bit better? Because we have a lot of younger people who are watching this and could end up in that same situation without doing their research. Mm -hmm. What would you have done differently? Actually, I wouldn't have changed not one thing. You know what I'm saying? Because, first of all, nothing was guaranteed. You know, when you when you out and, and you chasing your dream, then um, you have to use all the experiences that come along with that chase to grow and get better and learn because again you could go do that and not even achieve anything you know and just go back home and that still wouldn't be considered a failure because you tried that was your dream you know what i'm saying so all the things that i went through and and the learning experience it made me the artist that i am and 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 made me think about certain things and not be as careless and waste time and stuff like that because you got to understand that, listen, that door opens for one second. And when it opens, you got to be already ready to right. walk through mm -hmm. the door. You can't be like, oh, hold on. Let me do Give this. me a second. I'll be right back. You got to be ready when the door opens, man. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't change nothing. 
So, because learning about the industry back then compared to learning about it now is two different things. Right now, you can just jump on the internet and find out almost anything you want to know. Mm. How did you learn about anything you needed to do in the game back then? Did you have someone above you who's been in it that was trying to educate you on what to do, what not to do, or is just a trial, trial and error? Trial and error. Trial and error. When we, when we, when we as the group went to New York, we we were fortunate enough to. Um, have made um, an acquaintance with a guy named Dave DeBerry who had um, produced a single on the B-side of Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby. Mm. It, I think it was called Go Ill or something like that, but it was on the B-side. Even back in the day, it was A-side and the B-side. B-side. <laughs> so he had done the joint on the B-side, and he was kind of looking for, you know what I'm saying, to do whatever, and we hooked up with him, and he lived on 87th in Amsterdam, so we lived with him. You know what I mean? So he was kind of already in the, you know what I mean? In the business. In, a, in the business, in a production kind of way. So he still had some uh, uh, connections. His his brother was actually, um, I want to say Tony Rome. I don't know if you guys remember this guy. Mm -hmm. He was a huge manager back in the day with like the Houdini cats and all of them. So he had some connections. So we weren't, we weren't just, you know what I mean, thugging it out in hotels and on the street like that. We did have... Um, some some connections, you know what I mean, to have brought us all the way from Dallas to New York. You know what I mean? We was chasing, but we weren't retarded. <laughs> you know what I mean? We did have a little bit of comfort. So that him and the experiences I had with Delight just just coming through the, the ring of the first time after he had done a few production songs. and But other than that, just that whole experience of recording on a real level, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in the big studios and all of that, watching that whole process, I just kind of learned on the fly with everything. That's good. Man, so, um, yeah, you, you, so you go back up there after mm -hmm. you done left New York and Delight call you and say, mm -hmm. man, it's up. Right. It's up, man, get mm -hmm. ready. Well, yeah. How does that conversation go and, and kind of what happened? Man, look. <laughs> I, I still, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting hyped. That's why you bringing it up because I remember how, you know, so how excited I was. You know what I'm saying? I was like, finally. You know what I mean? And one day he, he was like, Link. He said, Dog. And really what it was, I was working at a bank at the time, right? And we had been conversing back and forth over the time, blah, 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 saying we're going to do whatever. And I was at work, and I just, I don't know, I just called him or whatever. And we was talking, blah, blah, blah. And I said, man, dog, you know what? I really need to just go ahead and quit, like on the cool, man. It's really time for me to quit this job. And he said, dog, you can quit. <laughs> I said, what? He said, dog, you can quit your job. Did you have any kids or a family at this time? I think I had a daughter. I had my, I had my oldest daughter at the time. Okay. I, was, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, bro. Hold up, cause I wasn't really, you know what I'm saying. You I was just, just capping. Yeah, I'm, I'm capping, and he doesn't respond. You see, cause when somebody says something like that, and you have, cause that's why I asked you that question, because when you have people who are depending on yeah, responsibilities, exactly. that's what I'm thinking about. You, you, exactly. So I'm like, yo, he said, no, he said, dog, straight up. I said, so whoa, whoa, whoa. so we need to really talk and where he said, bet, cool, call me when I get when you get home. I got to the house, of course, I'm, you know, I'm bugging. And then I called him and said, explain, hey, listen, this is the deal. This is what's happening. He said, look, this is what we going to do. I'm going to bring you up here, man. We're going to do a demo on you, and I'm going to shop you. We're going to get a deal. And if we get a record deal, I'm going to give you a publishing deal. This is bad. I gave my job a little, you know, I wasn't Two dumb. Weeks notice. I didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. I wasn't dumb. Mm. Took a leave of absence. Buy you out. <laughs> Be back. I got to take uh, yes, this sir. leave of absence. Yes, sir. Personal business. Yes, sir. Personal life. That, and is, it. that is exactly what I did. And it was just for 30 days. It was for, I said, okay, we'll give you 30 days. I bet. Dipped. In about two weeks, I had my demo done. Was finished with it. I came back home. Delight did his thing on the shopping. He said, Link, bro. We good. Bring your behind right back on out. So I was like, I'm out, and I never looked back. And you quit? Did you? No, you, did. You, you, did you, have, you ever? Went, you went back? Yeah, to I went back, and everybody was looking at me all shocked, like that. I can't believe you came back. Your personal, yeah, personal life hit me. It was like, damn, I can't. I said, I said it was a leave of absence. 
But soon after that, I was out. And so when you get, what was the song that you did on that demo, if you don't mind me asking? Mm -hmm. What was that? Cause that? That had to be a bad boy. Uh -huh. It was an extremely bad boy. The first song on that joint was My Body. Oh, that thing. How did how did Joe My Body go? The same way that. Get out of here, man. My, what? Yeah, man, that's my joint, man. That was my song. My man. body all over your body, man. Yes, sir. How long did it take you to write that song? I can't really say, man. Me and Delight, we just sat down one day and knocked it out. It was probably like a couple of hours, something like that. So yep. your song had the same cadence, the same. It is the same song, bruh. The song, the vote, matter of fact, my body on over your body, babe. Your body on over my body, babe. That's me on the song. Yeah. I didn't wow. even know that. Yeah, right on. I know you didn't. That's I didn't know I, that. That's why I'm on the podcast, baby. <laughs> I didn't let you know. Let you let say, know. That's uh, me, uh, man. You wrote that in the middle of the night and when my body screaming mm. for you, baby. Gotta call you that. up and let you know is what I'm feeling, baby. So you wrote you. Run, run, run. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, thank you for that, man. Yeah, no problem. Cause, yeah, that, man. Cause, cause see, at the end of the day, I don't really know how the, the writing part go, but right. some kind of way you know, huh? He's still right. Yeah, he's still right. No man, doubt brother, about it. Bad with the pen. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. What, but that writing part though, uh, how did they get you to commit to that? Well, let's go back. Let's stay on the fact that you, that demo shopped out mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And they seen, how many songs was on that I demo? Had, I had three songs on it. Three songs. Mm -hmm. I had my, my body. body. I had another joint called uh, So Fine. So Fine. And then I had another slow joint on there, with, a duet with Antoinette Rosen. Um, I can't really remember the I'm trying to I figure out who else bad. back in that, in your era who called himself coming up out of Dallas with them vocals back then. Out of Dallas? Yeah, it was somebody else. He wasn't by himself. It, we had somebody here. Mm. Back then. He looking like, like you. He looking like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't it remember. had to be oh, somebody. What what year was that it, 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 when you went back? It was 97. 97, boy, that was, that was a good time then, yeah, it too. it was, man. R&B was, R &B was, R &B was going in. How was it, though, like, with R&B and, and, and rap was still, rap was here, rap was prevalent, but it was like this. You could, both of them was kind of neck and neck during that time. They was coming up. Because you had Silk, you had all these different groups that was, mm -hmm. uh, you had a Jagged Edge, all this different stuff that was going on. So it was a, it, we had a tit for tat. I wish mm -hmm. it would have stayed like that, too. They was coming. They were they were coming then. They still weren't. It was still all about R and B, but they were. You know what I'm saying? They was they had weathered the storm because I remember being in school and in a little music class, and you know they listed genres of music. They ain't even list rap, mm -mm. and you know we was like, uh, where the rap category at on <laughs> on the deal? He was like, well, if rap music lasts two more years or three more years, I'll put it on her. That's what he actually said. Mm. Wow. So, you know, rap came up. They was just coming up back then, but we were still the number one selling music. I know, this time. generation nowadays, they, they're not into R&B. Like, my daughter, she's all about pop. She don't even really listen to, ra to, to, to rap at all. She might don't listen to no R&B hardly. I'm going to tell she's you She's about this. pop. I put money on it this morning. Uh, she was singing, uh, she was singing, uh, Rick James, she's a very freaky girl. This morning, walking to her car. What? Uh -uh. The whole song. I promise. My sixteen-year-old. I put money on it oh right Lord. now. You know, the only reason I would say maybe. I know she was. Let me tell you the only reason I say maybe, if it wasn't a TikTok. I don't know. I just know she you was know, singing. A lot of these kids nowadays. That's, that's the only true. reason they know some of these songs is because they bring the songs back and put it in a TikTok. That's true. That's it. She was singing that song this morning, right. walking to the car to crank her car up. And I'm like, what the hell does she know about that? In my mind, I'm telling you what I was thinking, but I kept on working on my computer. Right. I'm like, what the hell does she know about that? She knew something. But she, <laughs> she, she was just singing it. She and knew the words. She knew the words. <laughs> she knew the words, but she was singing uh, like the, the, the verse. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not just the chorus. Not just the hook. Right. And that's what messed me up. I'm like, how the hell does she know this song? Hey, she done heard it from someone. I was thinking they might have been playing it at her band. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Her band, you know, because she played a flute. She played a, uh, she played a oboe. She played mm -hmm. different instruments. Could and be. So that probably, I'm thinking she was trying to learn that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, them schools, a lot of time will bring them old songs back, right? True that. True. So you, true. it was, okay, let's get back to you. So once you go back up there, you get the deal, you sign, mm -hmm. and you, everything he told you happened. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. 
And it, were you good with your deal back then? Because back then they were shafting people on deals, and you and I both know that. Right on. Well, I was signed actually to Delight's Publishing Company. Okay. So, okay. so what happened was in the shopping, you know, he, I was not only offered a deal, recording deal, he was offered a production deal too to have his company over at the spot. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just me over there by myself. It was Delight. They signed him, and the, the, then Delight signed me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I was good. It was The deal was good. I was good. It wasn't no, you know what I mean? Because it's my partner. It's still business. You know what I'm saying? But that was my boy. It wasn't like I was straight signed to them, and they don't care. You know what I mean? This is my guy. So, yeah, the deal was, the deal was all right. Okay. So now once you do that, now you got to, after that, you got to come up with a, uh, album is that the 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 sex sex you down or sex, sex down, down sex, sex down. down is that was that the first the first one that was the first album that was the first and only album that we did on on that label which was back then was Sony Relativity it was sex down and was, did you did you okay I, I watched the video boy you went hard on that thing too but I I did kind of get a, 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 a I know he was competing maybe with Montel. Mm, that's what we felt bit. when we what? watched it. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, this, this video looked very Two similar. Two tall cats would Shut play up. basketball and all this good stuff. I said, yeah, Stop. it's something going on here. So what What was that like, that whole process, Stop, man? man? You was on top of the world. Hey, I felt like I was, you know, for that little moment, that little brief moment in time. We did feel like we was in the world. You know, after you, when you came from where I came from, and you put in your mind, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it. Ain't nothing going to stop me. And then you actually do it, and you get to live out your dream for a little bit. Man, it ain't nothing like it, brother. How did how did that song how did that song start off? Start that verse. Which off. one? The 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 one that you and Lisa Ray on that thing. Together. I was in two of them with Lisa Ray. What no, which about? one? It was the one, the main one, man. I knew from the moment that's that it. we met. That's the bad song, gone boy. <laughs> yeah, I really want to sex you. How, how, how did first? He said, "I knew from man that whole go hard to it. I really want to sex you." <laughs> but how'd you write that, man? I don't know. I feel it. That's yeah, his song. That's what's up, man. I appreciate it, man. Keep bumping it, man. <laughs> turn, your, turn your squad on to it, man. So how did tell me how did how did that process of writing that go and what? Just give me the spiel on it. It was it was, you know, delight and my other guy Kenny Flav. They had this that track, and the track was boom. Bass line was everything, but it was bumping. So I was like, "Wow!" I knew from tomorrow. you know what I mean. Yeah, and then it. life was just like, "Hey, we got to flip this link." We can't do this like no regular, you know, song. We got to flip it, man. He said, we, we need to be on that Bone Thugs and Harmony vibe. And then that's when he, he got me, dead, me, dead. Mm-hmm. And when he started doing that, I was like, oh, okay, bet, 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 bet. And then I just took that little vibe and then put lyrics to it. Oh, because, yeah, you talking about when, when the way Bone did it. And I want to fix everybody. And yeah. I'm going to miss everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I get it that's now. That's right, yeah. That's dope. So yeah. you always write all of your songs in studio? No. No? No, no he no, out there no, by the whole no. Okay, I'm just trying to see, because some people got to be in studio hearing the beat and then just write it out and be like, I'm done. No, nah, it's just inspiration comes in different places. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, it don't matter where I am. I can be in church. I can be sleep, um, believe it or not, and still hear the song. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on where you are. Sometimes you get contracted to do something for people. And you got to be there in the studio or whatever. And you still have to be able to Perform. create mm-hmm. in that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, the inspiration and creativity comes when you are away from the studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and do, I'm sorry, but then do most of the um, the things you write always come from your experiences? No. No? Not mine alone. They are... They are real experiences, though. I will, I will admit that. But like friends of mine or people that I know that have, you know, mentioned certain things or something that I witnessed somebody going through, and mostly my own experiences. Well, sex. Uh, I really want to sex your body. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, I just told you. <laughs> no, nah, I want to hear where that it comes from. That said. No, I want to. I'm talking about that had something to do with him. Well, the you know, thing I'm talking is, about the lyrics. Yeah, yeah I stop got you. playing, man. <laughs> I tried and to get who out are, of and, it. And who are you talking about? That's yeah, what I was uh, trying to get to. Y'all yeah, trying to be messy. <laughs> um, well, the title of the CD was "Sex Down." Yeah, mm-hmm. "Sex Down." It was about a relationship 
from a male's point of view, where he is in the beginning, sex, sex, sex. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to hit. That's all I want. Yeah. But it grows into um, an emotional thing where feelings are involved. So that's what the album was. So I was trying to just stick to the script of okay, we need another song with this type of content. So that's really where the inspiration for that song came from, along with the fact that, you know, Light told me to switch it up a little bit. So that wasn't like a personal, you know what I mean? No experience <laughs> that I already had. And I just, yeah, let me write about it. No, I'm not even going to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Out of all it the now. songs that you've done, which one is your favorite? That is an impossible question. <laughs> that's like me saying, out of all your children you got, which one of them you love the most? Yeah. That's yeah, very difficult. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Because you love them all for different, different reasons. reasons. You know what I'm saying? I have my favorites. You know what I mean? Some songs of mine are my favorites that haven't even been out, that nobody has even heard. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of difficult for me to See, that's the one thing we've always said. Every time we ask that question, everybody always answers always the last one that they did is always their favorite. It's never usually like one they did like five years ago is their favorite. It's mm -hmm. always the last one because as you move along, you're making it better and better and better. So to mm -hmm. you, this is my best work. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you something on that. Uh, let's get back to uh, uh, that song. And you know I really know I do that one. He <laughs> said, "Yeah, nigga, let's get back to that one." What man? I want to know, <laughs> I want to know about uh, like, uh, did you know it was gonna be that big? Yes, you knew it. Knew it. How? Well, because of how we felt and and what we heard when we did, recorded it, and the, the way that once we presented the entire album, because basically the the label said, "Here, take this money, go." Bring me an uh -huh. album, mm -hmm. right? They didn't bother us. They didn't send nobody. Hey, well, we think you need this producer, and we're going to cook up with these guys. It was none of that. They trusted us out the gate. Like, Delight, Link. We had never really done anything. We had a fabulous demo with my body on it. You understand? Which was an incredible record. Beat. So for them, they was like, damn. You know what I mean? Here. So we just... We went and did our thing. So when we came back and had this big gathering and me, they presented me to the everybody, boom, and we sat in the room and listened to the record. Man, when they when they were, you know, feeling all of it. But when Really Wanted Sex Your Body came on, the entire room was like, oh, my God. That's it right there. That's the one. That's it. They hadn't even heard, you know what I'm saying? Really Wanted Sex Your Body is fourth. On the record, they, they hadn't done, even. Yeah. They was like, Heard "That's the it. <laughs> that's that. Oh, that's the one right there." So, so we knew because we knew then that they were gonna get behind the project yeah. because mm -hmm. they had something that they believed in. And so that song, that song right there, y'all knew that was the one too. Before y'all even came to them, y'all yeah. know when they got to that one, you said, "Watch it, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah." yeah. yeah. We Bad boys, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Now, that's I, why they put it forth because they wanted them to, you know, hear these first, but. It was, it was a building. It was a building. I wanna, and so who went and got Lisa Ray? That's she is on the wall. We didn't. We didn't have a. Well, uh, oh, that's my girl right there. <laughs> who went and got her? It, it, man, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna be crazy. You probably ain't gonna believe it. So, when we were discussing the video, so now this is the second. You know, this is our second go round. This is the second single. Really want to your body wasn't the first single. Mm. What you gonna do was the first single. Yeah. All right, the one when y'all tried to be funny. You're talking about. No more tell. So, <laughs> That's so, <laughs> so they were asking me. There was a um, the A and R for my project was a was a woman named Awanda Booth. Okay. All right. She the one that signed us. She the one was filling us or whatever. So she we were talking and she said, "So who are you going to get to be the leading lady in the video?" And without hesitation, I said. Lisa. Lisa Ray. Because at the time, that's when Players Club was out. Yeah, yeah. She was the it girl. Yeah. She was top. Wasn't nobody better than Red at the time. So I said, I want Lisa Ray. You know? They was like, okay, well, I don't, we don't know what you mean. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? All that. I was like, bet, bet. So Faith would have it. I was performing on the um, K104 Summer Jam in Dallas. At home, there's a lot of people, me, LL, 
Maya, a whole bunch of people, Tamia, Montel. You know, we all came out during that time. We was doing our thing. After the concert, Park Avenue. Yeah, the, the Park Avenue. Park I Park remember. Avenue. The the real, one you come down the stairs. The, yes, that Stop one. Playing. On Park Lane. That yeah. Park Avenue. Because there have been a couple of other parks. That's Avenue, right. But the original one, right? We got a, the after parties there. I got a VIP section, right? Boom, we fall up in that. Ah, I'm chilling. Yeah, what up that? I'm on. I just perform at the crib, so I'm. Oh, you, you know, right. I'm other yeah, one day at home. Yeah. Bartender, you know what I'm talking about? It's going down. Man, I sat back, and I just so happened to look to the left, and I said, damn. I said, I'm, I, either I'm tripping, or that's Lisa Ray. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I said, wait a minute. I looked again, I said, well, I be down. And she's by herself mm. in my VIP. Mm. I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This ain't finna happen without me saying something. something. So I got up and walked over there and introduced myself. What's up? Lisa Ray, how you doing? I'm Link. She said, hey, Link, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And we, from that point on, we struck up a friendship that is off the chain. I asked her that night, I said, man, you're not going to believe this. But I told my people, I wanted you to be in my video. And she was like, really? What's on my bad man? We talked. She said, I'll do it. And ever since then, man, we've been cool. Ain't Damn. that crazy? Damn. That's, That's crazy, fake. yo. That's Shout fake. out to Lisa Ray. Yeah, Shout Lisa out to Stacey J, your cousin. All y'all. We love all y'all. Let's get it. <laughs> Where's she at now? Yeah, uh, she. Yeah. I, I talked to Stacy J about. Remember, I talked to him. Mm -hmm. We uh, we. I talked to a cousin, but I ain't talked to Lisa in a couple of years. years. Well, some years now. Yeah, yeah. But that yeah, that's, that's girl, dope, man. man. She actually did another video. That's what you were saying. Yeah, I had three singles on that record, and she did two of them with me. What, what was the name, name of the other one? one? I don't want to see. I don't want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotta go. Gotta, gotta go look check that up. one back yeah. out because I I was so focused on that I know, one, man. I know that, that most, most, <laughs> most link fans. That's what they, they focus on that one Joker, man, <laughs> and get mad about anything else. You better not mess with that one. Right on. Right so, on. Um, like, uh, when you I know you you you're a man of many. Uh, you know about music. Top three artists of all times, dead or alive. Any genre. Any genre. We do this every. Every episode. Boy, y'all cold blood. Number one. Top three of all time. Only We're just three. talking about in my uh -uh. opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, this is your opinion. opinion. My opinion. Yes. How I feel my top three. Your top yes. three. Okay, yeah. Number one. It, of all time. Donny Hathaway. Okay. That's my boy right there, boy. Okay. That nigga was bad, too, boy. Yeah, God, he, he is so. the reason that I do what I do. Donny Hathaway. That mm. is, dude has the most incredible man. vocals I've ever heard in my life. What's your favorite, most Number, favorite song? Oh, here. Yeah. From him? Mm -hmm. Sack Full of Dreams. Man, mm. why is that one so? F uh, the vibe and the content. What I understood exactly what he meant. He just basically was asking. He just want peace mm. in the world. Like why the world got to be like it is. You know what I'm saying? You get a chance. You just listen to that song and you'll understand. Sack right. full of dreams, yo. Number two. For real. Uh, number two. This is the most difficult one. Of number all. three is always the hardest. God. Like, oh my, this is Prince. Prince. Okay. 27 inch from playing mm -hmm. Prince. Twin, Prince. And 27. that is one of the reasons why, yeah. because I was able to go see him in concert in Dallas one time on New Year's Day in the snow. And he was still to this day the most incredible artist I have ever seen in my life. Wow. I've never seen anybody do what he did. Like, he went from instrument. To instrument, instrument, to to instrument, instrument, 27. to instrument. That is ridiculous. Like, how do you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's hard enough to learn one. How you, how you, you know what I'm saying? That was just, that blew me away, man. Yes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've never forgotten it and have always been a, a huge Prince fan. People always say, you, you like Prince more than No, it ain't that I like Prince more than Mike. You know, Mike is, I grew up watching Mike. Mike is, you know what I'm saying? He is on he's Mike. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But for for me, what struck an accord with me was the, the talent that Prince had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Number three. Michael Jackson. <laughs> All right, then. That was <laughs> easy. Coming. Yeah, Mike, Mike, yeah. And Mike. He do, um, and Prince is the, on, the only reason for me that he's not number two because, you know, that's close. That's neck and neck. People are always trying to 
figure out who was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's something that can go either way. Yeah, that's that's it's just the same some, thing like yeah. Biggie and Tupac. Is yeah. to me Matter that's the opinion. same thing. Yeah, Matter of opinion, man. It, it's Mike for me because I grew up with Mike. See, I, I I fell in love with the Mike with the afro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. Watching that little dude and you talking about having the, the my kid? eyes. Yeah, having my when I saw him in the little western little jacket with the mm-hmm. shingles on it. He was on one of them shows. I can't remember what yeah, that show yeah. was back then. Yeah, him with his brother. When I saw that, I was I, now I was I real little, that. but it that. impacted me. I was like, "Wow!" You know what I'm saying? And then I just followed him, and fo- and he was just incredible, man. Like he he the de- he just Mike. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So okay, you didn't see that very often. It was mainly him. Yeah, he was that dude was man. You know what I'm saying? With mm-hmm. the fro and could nobody out dance him. You know what I'm saying? It's just when I grew up. And start listening to Prince music. I was more on Prince vibe mm-hmm. musically. You know what I'm saying? Like from the stuff he used to sing. You know what I'm saying? To that that was I was more. You know what I'm saying? Attracted to that. That's what's up. So, um, yeah. if you had to think about what was the lowest point in your career, and how did you overcome it? The lowest point in my career. Yeah, because you know everybody has their ups and downs. So, um, that l- l- just let y'all know there have been several low points. Um, that's just the way it is in the music business. Mm-hmm. You got you can't just be out here playing. You if you don't love this, you cannot do this because it's a lot of stuff that come with it. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's so hard, and that's why the payoff is what it is. Because if anybody can endure the things that come along with trying to make it in the music, see, most people think just because um, you're talented and you can sing and uh, that you uh, nah, it's so much more to it than that. You know what I mean? So I would probably say, like after um, I gave up my body because I fought for that record for a long time. You know, I did not want to give that record up because I knew that that was a hit record. Mm-hmm. See, it's hard to give up a record that you know, you know it's a hit. You know what I'm saying? But because of who they were, Gerald, may rest in peace, Keith and Johnny, they were mm-hmm. forming that super group that nobody had really done before. Nobody had, right. done, that. Nobody had done that before. And it was going to be the first single. And they paid me. And I'm going to have publishing on this joint for years and years to come. It, it took a while, but I had the, the, the personal stuff and the personal attachment to the record. Um, I finally got over because my team, they was like, Look, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But if you do this, this is what's going to happen, which was... The doors for um, other writing opportunities were going to open. Mm-hmm. But as an artist. You're romantic with it. You're going to struggle a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're romantic with what you have. You have an attachment to it. You see, but, but it's like Link. So so let's, let's just imagine, if you will, if Link released My Body, What You Gonna Do, which was the first thing, and Really Want to Sex Your Body. So, I mean, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what happened was, since this is the first single on LSG, which is on Electric, guess what Electric going to do? Hey, you can get our whole roster, brother, which led to Silk, Mm -hmm. Meeting in My Bedroom, If You. You wrote Meeting in My Bedroom? Yes, sir. Get the hell out of here, boy. That's my song now. Are you serious? I'm dead serious, brother. I ain't going to tell you. They no say your pen dope. You. That's what DL has told me. He said, that boy pen serious. <laughs> yeah, I, co- I co-wrote that along with my guy. Dope, Delight. man. We, we co-wrote it. Uh, we did Y'all so do many a lot records. of things together. Well, we were, we were signed. I was signed. We were uh, Sign, uh, yeah, a squad mates, back yeah. right. We was a squad. You know what I'm saying? And um, What was the other one? Keep going. If you... Uh, <laughs> Let's make love, sexcellent, um, don't go. You're right. Uh, uh, we're calling you. 
I mean, how many you want me no, to name? Well, you got them, don't you, man? You were, you were going, so you were, you hell, you might have been silk, man. Yeah, I'm, well, they say I'm the, uh, you know, the the other member of the group. <laughs> right. That's how they tell, or what they call me. But it led to a whole bunch of people, man. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, What's the biggest song you've ever written for someone else? Crazy, Casey and JoJo. Mm, man, I know that song. I love that song. I'm going crazy, 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 just thinking about you, baby. Right now, y'all remember that song? Come on, of man. Of course, man. Yeah. man we, man, come on, man. You were, you were writing everything, man. Was, but, but see, this is what I'm saying. That is what happened by because allowing that, LSG mm-hmm. to perform my body. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? All the doors for the writing opened up, but. It, as an artist, it's still hard. Hard. See what I'm saying? And when you write and for all these like people, that. you always keep them in mind when you're writing for these people? Uh, it just kind of depends on the situation. Sometimes I don't even know who, who get it. is going to do the song. It's just okay. a matter of, you know, delight. Like, like crazy, I remember Delight really originally wanting that song to be for um, uh, Braxton, Tony Braxton. Mm. Like, as he was composing and did it and we was working on it and started writing he said I'm gonna try to get this to Tony you know what I'm saying but it ended up going to Casey and Joe so a lot of times you don't know where yeah, it's going know. you know what I'm saying but there are times when you are contracted like how Silk when Silk heard the my body and boom 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 and said hey who is that we need to boom so we were we knew we continually were. working with him mm-hmm. how, so do ask, you always start publishing hold on do you always get publishing for all of the songs you write yes <laughs> Easy. What? Easy. Publishing is the most in, important thing that an artist can own. Period. Okay. It, it is is doper than being on the stage. Is 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 doper than you know what I mean? Um, singing at wherever. You know what I'm saying? When you own publishing, that means you gonna get a check for the rest of your life. I think that's what uh, I think that's what Ray when Jamie Foxx was playing Ray, he was mm-hmm. talking about that all that good stuff. Yeah, man, it's all about the publishing, brother. So, <laughs> so yes, I do own my publishing. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you about uh, just that that because I, I remember in that uh, video I seen Gerald R. P. to Gerald Avert, mm-hmm. um, just his his time dealing with him and and you know being on the set with him. How was that? You know, Gerald was man. Me and Gerald was so cool. It's a shame, man. That was, that was my big brother, man. I miss him, man, because he was he would be on me, man. He would be on me. You know, I, I, I'm i thinking I just, you know what I'm saying, blew the damn wheels off. He'll say, little bro, I like that. You did good. He said, but I think you can do it better. Dang. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying, shit, this is Gerald LeVert. You know what I mean? So I got to come on with it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he was in... My I really want a sexual body yeah, video. I, yeah, He's, you yeah. know, him along with a lot of That's other right. people. That's right. Teddy Bear. Yeah, but he was on my ass, man. So Gerald pushed me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was cool. It wasn't It wasn't no competition type of... It was never that. It was always the ultimate respect between both of us. He was just the coolest brother. I mean, just so damn cool, man. You so know, he was his his drink of choice was... And I don't, you know, I hope I ain't... But he used to drink Patron. Mm-hmm. And boy, he it was his birthday... Probably this might have been the last birthday I was with him uh, before he passed. And he was he was like, come on, man. Come on, bro. Take this shot with me. Wow. And I was like, nah, G, I don't drink Patron. He was like, what? If you were my friend, you would drink something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, man. You're taking a shot. <laughs> I'm taking two or three of them, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that was, that was my guy, man. I. I enjoy working with G, man. Well, tell me, where, where were you when you found out that he had uh, passed on? I was at home. I used to live in Duncanville. Okay. Had a little condo over there, man, and I was at home, and Delight called me and broke the news, and I was sick. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, mm. and and you, it crushed you, didn't it? What? Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Because it was so unexpected. Like, what? Like, no. You know what I'm saying? I, I could not believe it. Wow. I couldn't believe it, man. Did That's you ever get a chance to hang out with his father? Yes, I've hung out with his father a couple of times, man. He real cool, quiet, laid back too. I see where G got it from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, yeah. probably why he was pushing you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Growing up with that old man, and I do. Hey, man, he got an OJ as a mm. pop. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Talk about pressure. 
That's a lot of pressure. Damn. <laughs> in, yeah. the, in, in the video section, by we saw. Was that Phase on Love in that, that video? Was that was Phase on. And he was just so. on the show. He was. Yeah, yeah. he been on our show. Phase okay, can we saw him. We like, stopped the we, camera. We, we, we paused. paused that thing. I said, <laughs> like, "Is that Phase on?" Yeah, it was a lot of people. Silk was in it. Uh, Lisa Ray, my girl Terry J Vaughn was in the joint. Um, my guy from a uh, guy was in the joint. The what's my boy name? I'm tripping right now. He gonna he gonna cuss me out. Uh, Damien. Okay. Mm. Damien was in the video, so I had a lot of people. I had a, 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 a Duke was there on set. It was man, it was a lot of people, man. Man, it was a big old party. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, most, you time. have something you want to ask my guy, man? You just enjoying it, <laughs> man. <laughs> so yeah, because this was what this was when they had slow jam. You mm. slow dancing was on. What I do mm. want to. I'm ask. talking about our slow dance. Do you hear me? You didn't. Uh-huh. You didn't <laughs> been drug around the house <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> Say, man. Hold on. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> we right always, we still get our slow dance. Yeah. Good, no man, matter what beautiful. nobody else say, they can do what they go hey, do. The that's, kids, that's the kids awesome. be like, take it to the room. Take it to the room. <laughs> I don't want to like, see that. Right, right. But ain't y'all go to the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What but, you about that? Um, okay, with R and B not being so hot right now so to say mm-hmm. and the music industry has changed drastically how have you tried to um change with it so to say to try to keep r&b relevant mm-hmm. you know that's been I've, i gotta admit i can't i gotta keep it real with y'all that's been very difficult for me um because one thing i would never ever do is compromise my music like i ain't never finna try to make music sound like this to fit in here. That's what I was wondering. You see what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I can't I can't do that old faddish stuff that's gonna be gone. I can't. You know what I mean? I have to continue doing music like I've always been doing, and that is by using the things that inspire me to create. You know, try to put it around a good sounding base of music and talk about some real stuff that later on in life 10, 15, 20 years after the song came out, you can still relate to the song because it was so real in the beginning. You know what I mean? So I don't, I just, I just try to, you know, the the thing that I have difficulty with is social media. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm just not one of them dudes. You know what I mean? They just pull out the all the time and you see jokers walking down. They can't even walk down the damn street. They just, you know what I'm saying? I can't do that, man. I felt the same way when social media begun. And I felt like if you post too often. Cause people that's, get tired of People you. get tired of you. But it's to a point where if you're not posting Correct. enough, Correct. you become irrelevant. Correct. So I remember when it first came out, and it was like, oh, I can't do this. So now you're like, I have to do this. I have Correct. to learn how to do this. Correct. I st- I'm Correct. opposite. Correct. I just jump right in like a nutcase and just try everything. You know what I mean? I just, I just I can't. Just, I don't know. I can't, I can't not try because I feel, I felt like in order to stay. I, a lot of times mine is more geared toward injecting something into what others are, the children and people are seeing. Mm-hmm. But when you see the kids start going there all the time and they're, and we don't have no presence, I think it's an imbalance. Mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? I get it. Because if you don't, then, then you don't help the cause. Your mm-hmm. legacy, your foundational bill, the things that Silk done, the things that uh, key sweat done. All that stuff is so needed for the foundation of what mm-hmm. hip hop is doing right today. It True. is the literal, uh, the literal foundation of it. To it be is. honest with you, yeah, and a lot of these jokers, man, be sampling songs and they and don't exactly. even know don't who even the original don't, songs. Don't know who he no. came from or anything. And we'll at all. argue with you. No, that ain't that ain't. It'd be like, fam. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. No, no, it ain't my man. All right, bro. You know see you in court. I got a question. So, so <laughs> see you in court. Really? That's what it is. Let me ask you this. Uh, uh, with Erica Badu being from Dallas, you being from Dallas, have you ever ran into her? You know, that's crazy as hell because I have not. Really? Out of all this time, I never have met mm. Erica. Never ran into her. None of that. Wow. Never been in the same, um, just nothing. And, what, and what's also crazy is Delight and her are partners. Like mm. they were partners before either of us blew up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, did your song did it go platinum or the which one? The, CD the, 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 yeah. or the see back then you know we used to use tactics. We used to use tactics. Okay. Right? So what you gonna do was the 
my first single, and it was the joint that went, that they actually released as a single. Okay. Where you can go buy just a single. Okay. But because they were so, you know, in love and felt so strongly about Really One Sex Your Body, they like, no, we're not releasing this as a single. The only way you can get this song. It's from the album. By the album. Mm. See okay. what I'm saying? So they didn't release that back then because back then, it was you different. had to actually buy the CD. Mm. That's correct. Wasn't no Pandora, wasn't no YouTube, wasn't, none wasn't of that. no streaming, none of that. You none know what I'm saying? How you about, had to go buy it. How do you like to change the, 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 the you have to deal with it because it's the evolution. streaming compared to the CDs? Uh, from a financial standpoint, Streaming is a little bit better on the mechanical side. It's okay. a little better. Uh, that is. But as far as sales, no. It's mm. awful. You know what I mean? You Because you got to, first of all, you got to stream X amount of like 5,000, 10,000, 7,000 just to get 100, 200, 300. Mm. See what I'm saying? Whereas back in the day, hey, this CD cost $17.99. You know what I'm saying? Now the difference is the 1799, the lion's share of that went back to the label back then. Mm -hmm. That is the difference in the streaming now. See that stuff is yours. It comes back that if you own your masters, which most of the young people do now, because mm -hmm. ain't no more labels like that, people putting their own stuff out. So that comes back to you. It's just that you just gotta generate more streams, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to do it, do that via social media, with because there is no limit to how many people you can reach because it's worldwide. That's the positive thing about social media. If you use it right, and if you can reach you can the masses, oh my God, you can you can win. You so, know what I'm saying. So how do you feel about um, most R&B? Not all, but some R&B going towards Southern blues now. I can't be can't be mad at them. Because the thing is with R&B, it has, seems like right now it has such a stigma with the radio stations. It's like if you mention that, it's like they automatically categorize it as old people old music. People. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So all this is doing is, is providing more opportunities for some of the same cats that was in the gen same genre as me. You know what I'm saying? They not being hated on as much because it's, 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 to them it's new. I mean, it's really not. Because all it is, it is a blues vibe with up-to-date, more current lyrics. The stories aren't as sad. Like with blues, you know, yeah, I, I woke up this morning and all I had was a dollar. You know, that's terrible. Mm. Who wants to wake up and all he got is a damn dollar? That's horrible. Like, I don't want to hear the whole story. But a story lot of people <laughs> been in I, that situation. I know, but I'm saying, for me, that is, you know, blues you is the blues. It's the reason why yeah. you got the blues. Well, let me upscale you one time. Uh, so, we got a new King R&B, Jacquees. Uh, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> So, would so, you ever work with, I have, like... I like, call one person king of R&B. I'm chill. So. I'm trying to get this question out here. Would you ever... Could you ever work with, like, the younger I guys if they... Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, of course Because I, I think that, that wave is out there. Those guys, you do have some guys out there, like the Chris Browns, mm -hmm. that, that are, are R&B-ish. They just can't mm -hmm. say it. Chris Brown. Uh, Usher. Uh, Usher. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would. I would. I'm not... See, I'm not, you know, stupid. Yeah. You know what I'm, saying? I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to block the check under no circumstances. Because <laughs> in this business, with me being in here 20 plus years, if you can still go on a check and you don't get the check, it's something wrong with you. That's, That's real. This ain't, this ain't, we not, we're not the younger generation where them dudes is generating, generating, generating. I'm a 90s artist. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So if I have, you know, that still got to be dope. And if I got, if I have anything to do with it, you know, if I can touch it at all, it's still going, the music's still going to represent me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to working with nobody unless they are trash to me. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, nah, I'm not fooling with you, check or not. I, I'll write something for you. You know what I'm saying? But you're not going to hear my vocals on. I'm not going to be up there. You're not going to you know, pull your brand down. No, I'm not going to do that. Have you ever written for anyone outside of the R&B genre? I have. I've written for uh, Spanish artist Talia. 
Okay. I don't know if anybody. Yep. I've, I've heard that name Talia? before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was uh, got a chance to work with my guy Steve Morales, who was the dude that did the I Don't Want to See record. Mm-hmm. The one I said I got another video with Lisa Ray with, he did that record. So he's a, like a big pop producer. He was also a part of the original squad when we did the My Body and all of those things. And so he was part of the team. And he broke off and did his own thing and created incredible pop relationships. So because of that, I was able to write on a record for Talia. Wow, dope. Could an R&B um, writer write for a rap artist? Mm-hmm. Easily. Okay. I was wondering. Because if you listening, all some of the rappers are doing now is singing. Mm-hmm. They, they're they singing their lyrics. They street lyrics, but they have a tone to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, it's the same thing. All we got to do is just speed up the lyric. Which one of those stick out to you, though? The one that you kind of like uh, in it, a new new artist that kind of sing rap. Sing rap. You got your T-Rails. You got, Kim Moray. I'm not tapped all the way in. But Moray. Um, Derez. Derez Deshaun. And some of them sing. And, 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 right. and they sing, but it's painful. Baby C. Yeah, he knew, though. He wouldn't mm. know him. But they sing, but it's painful. Like it ain't, it's like millionaires. Carl Crawford said, "It's these guys are um, the saddest. Mi- you know, like the millionaires are sad <laughs> mm-hmm. the way they sing. Rod mm-hmm. Wave. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know any of their names, man. I've got to be honest. You with stay, you. stay focused on your lane and yeah. what you do. I mean, I listen to them. You know, when you turn the radio on, you don't have a choice. Don't have a choice. They're playing. They're not playing us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if the radio is on, that's what you hear. It's, it's some stuff out there that I do like. I don't know who they are. You don't know. Yeah. You know, you know I mean? the songs. I just know, know. I just listen to the song when it comes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, I like that a little bit. Yeah, but you got something yeah, to yeah. it. You know, but, but I, I don't follow them like that. No, I get, I get it. I get you guys. You, you from the '90s, so I, you ain't trying I, to. I'm a '90s artist, man. I'm real R&B. R&B. I, I mm-hmm. definitely. I man. Do you think it's gonna come back? Yeah. I know it's gonna come back. Well, it's that just, always does. I know everything always comes back. Of, how long? I'm ready. I don't know. We just. It's just a matter. of, See, that's the whole purpose of the migration to the southern soul because now that has a market so now somebody go, so the calvin richardson yeah that's southern soul mm-hmm. see what i'm saying and they will play that on the radio so that's why you got jokers going over there so you're gonna see it come back we're just trying to they just trying to be slick with it <laughs> and come in the side though and then they're gonna hit you with it again but it's gonna come back mm. Hey, man, thank you so much, man. Hey, man, yeah. we love you and appreciate yeah. you for coming on Boss yeah. Talk 101, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Can I hey, shout out? I, I, I was about to say, yeah. I, how can people get a hold of you Yeah, if, yeah. They, if they trying to get a hold of you and if you got anything up and coming that we need to talk about? No doubt, no doubt. I'm definitely getting ready to release uh, my EP called Sex Down 2. Got seven joints mm-hmm. on it. Um, we'll be releasing a single very soon in the spring, April, May, or whatever. It's a joint called Garage. Uh, got a feature on it's gonna be dope y'all make sure y'all check it out in order for y'all to check it out y'all gotta keep up with me so follow me on Instagram at link the artist I'm also on Twitter link the artist same thing and I'm on Facebook Lincoln link browder on Facebook alright so those three places y'all can get up with me make sure y'all come check me out man still doing it if you still looking for good music got sex, sex down is still out there creeping is still out there I uh, got a couple of singles weather that I dropped hey. you know what I mean so I still been working it's just people don't know where I am so mm-hmm. that's why I'm glad right here on Boss Talk on 101 Boss Talk 101 E C E O and Mr. Me Maker, on. let's Mr. get it. Mr. Maker brought me on and I did my thing. So shout out to hell of a Appreciate job. it, dog. Man, Appreciate thank it. you so much, man. Yeah, like no problem. You, you, hey, man. Excitement is all I, I get when I get around my. Hey, man, this is my era, so I, I understand, man. Yes, sir. People don't my realize. Era too. Well, no, she younger than us, uh-huh, man. Nineties <laughs> was my era. Oh, okay. What are you talking all right. About? Well, anyway, I was a teenager. Money Moses said it was his era a while ago. He's still listening to that You're music, right on. man. It's everybody's era. <laughs> yeah, man. But thank you so much, man. We love no you, problem. bro. And if it's any time you getting ready to do something, okay. push something out, no. anything you doing, we with it, man. Just say, hey, E, man, I'm gonna come back on. I gotta blast something out, man, or just. Hey, E, can you holler this out? Right and on. it's coming just like that. Man, I appreciate y'all having me on Boss Talk 101. What a man. boss's talk, man. Yep. Holler at your boy. It's a unique hustle. And we out. Pow.